Hello world, it's Sunday, it's the 12th of January 2020. It's about 12.30, 1pm in the afternoon UK time. It's been a week since my last video. A lot's changed in the world. Uh, the eclipse of a couple of nights ago. Well, that was really interesting. I was out for a meal with a very rare occasion. I actually went out in the middle of an eclipse and it was like, yeah, beautiful moon. And then today we have the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And in many ways, this year so far has been very tumultuous. I'm not just talking about the uh, surgical strike against Soleimani or about the Iranian missile that downed the Ukrainian plane, killing, murdering all of those people. There's also, of course, the ongoing situation in Australia. And I notice that um, a number of world leaders, most notably Boris Johnson and Scott Morrison, have taken the approach that there's no problem that's big enough that it can't be run away from by being on holiday. Words like Nero and Rome fiddling while Rome burns spring to mind. I also note that um, a number of people around the world are questioning not only Iran and the motives for what's happened, but also would the missile strike have happened if America hadn't took, taken out Soleimani? These are questions we'll never know the answer to. But I would like to give you a couple of quotes before I get into some serious astrology. Who said this? In 2011, the only way Obama figures he's ever going to get re-elected is to start a war with Iran. He has absolutely no ability to negotiate. Isn't it pathetic? And then again, who said this in 2013? Obama will someday attack Iran in order to show how tough he is. Kettle pot black. Now, as I've said on a number of occasions before, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is actually quite a challenging pattern in the sky. Saturn and Pluto are in exactly the same degree of longitude in the sky today. It is precise. They are not at the same degree of latitude because if they were at the same degree of latitude and longitude, then it would be an eclipse. But because Pluto's orbit is so tilted to the plane of the ecliptic, unlike the other planets in the sky, uh, this potential for there to be an eclipse is infinitesimally, if that's the right way to pronounce it, small. It can never happen. Nevertheless, they are conjunct in longitude. And um, what this means is that there is one particular of the segment of the sky that is incredibly finitely minute, that is currently emanating a great deal of astrological and possibly astronomical energy towards planet Earth. Now, the fact that these planets in question have a history of not getting on with each other, Saturn and Pluto, father and son, one at the other, um, suggests that in the very short term, Saturn's desire for structure and order and authority and strength and might being in its own sign of Capricorn is in a very overbearing and overriding situation. And it is kind of imposing upon Pluto's more, I wouldn't say genial or benevolent, but I would say more um, transformative, regenerative and rebirthing energy. Because after all, Pluto in Capricorn is slowly but gradually and steadily transforming our attitudes towards the world we live in the way it is run and the way we manage our resources. After Saturn has moved on from Pluto, which will begin tomorrow, later in the year, Saturn will retrograde and it will come back and stand still about two to three degrees, one percent of the sky away from Pluto. So the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is going to be going on in the background, but the level of intensity and extremism that this, this aspect generates is at its peak now. 
Later, this, back, this energy will remain fairly constantly high over the remainder of the year, at least until the time when um, Saturn stops going retrograde and starts moving forward again, which won't be until mid-September. However, Jupiter is still picking up speed in Capricorn. Well, it's, it's, it's at its fastest motion, apparent motion now, because the Sun has just conjuncted Jupiter. Now, we have the Sun in the sky conjuncting Saturn and Pluto at this time also. Mercury in the sky is conjunct Saturn and Pluto, as is Ceres. So it seems to me that today is an incredibly significant time. Today is a day where words, actions, decisions that are made today are going to resonate many, many, many years into the future. The sun in the sky will actually conjunct Saturn in 24 and Pluto in 24 hours from now. The Saturn, conjunction, Saturn Pluto conjunction is in a couple of hours from now, later today. I find it fascinating and probably just a little bit anecdotal, but still fascinating from my point of view, that at the time of this awesome conjunction where you have the Sun, Ceres, Saturn, Pluto and Mercury all within one degree of each other as we speak, that there's this massive summit meeting tomorrow of Britain's royal family. Now, this is something I've been talking about a long time. I mentioned even a year or two ago that there was going to be major changes in the royal family and it was going to peak around this time. This is of very little interest to many people outside of Britain and indeed of little interest to many inside Britain. And I am no royalist, but I do ascribe to the magic of having a monarch of the country. It is part of the old high magic. And in that context, I will always support the idea of the monarchy, even if I don't particularly like some of the people who aspire to this so-called elitism. Nevertheless, the changes that are going on at the moment, I suspect, are superficially covering up for something that's actually far deeper. As I have stated many times in the past, I still believe, having said this constantly for 20 to 30 years, that Charles will never be king. William is obviously being lined up, and I suspect that there are future further developments which have not yet hit the public eye concerning the royal family, especially in the life of um, the Duchy of Cornwall, Charles's particular end of the operation, that are going to cause further developments in the coming months and um, yeah crazy scenes going on there's going to the monarchy will obviously survive and it will obviously change all of this is happening during Saturn Pluto during an element of reductionism pruning streamlining weeding clearing and if necessary bringing in the scalpel and being utterly ruthless mercenary is cruel and callous Ruthless is just yes, no, black, white. This is happening in everyone's lives to some degree or another at the moment. But I retain a degree of optimism and positivity about this because Jupiter is now somewhere around nine degrees of Capricorn. He is nine or ten weeks away from conjuncting Pluto and then Jupiter is going to conjunct Pluto for the rest of the year well through to November and Jupiter Pluto conjunction seems to be a really positive thing equal and opposite brightest and darkest biggest and smallest unconscious and super conscious this should be a really good thing it should be a really balancing factor it augurs well for some type of new approach to words like economy business nationalism and I would hope that the more we get into this year, particularly from the end of March onwards, we will start to see some type of turnaround in fortune of uh, a number of different places in the world. I, I note with fascination this morning, there was the first photographs and videos coming out of Australia showing all the devastation in the rain in the forests there and showing how 
certain trees and shrubs are already beginning to regrow. The first green shoots and pink flowers are re-emerging. It also has to be noted from an astrological perspective but where we are now and over the coming couple of weeks with Saturn and Pluto now coming up to oppose major points in the horoscope of Donald Trump, I suspect there are going to be further developments in his life and his position over the coming month in a way that is going to bring significant changes into this area. I will concentrate more on this one another time. But meantime, today and the next 24 hours, Sun conjunct Saturn conjunct Pluto, Mercury conjunct Saturn conjunct Pluto, Ceres, the asteroid that deals with nurturing, conjunct the Sun conjunct Saturn conjunct Pluto. I think if I had to summarize all this in one sentence, I'd be saying, well, look, the way we nurture other people, the way we let other people nurture us, the way we nurture ourselves. Nurturing ourselves isn't just through digestion, diet and nutrition. It's through finding self-love, self-appreciation, self not putting ourselves down or being critical of ourselves, not being critical of others, being acceptant and finding the love and finding the humour. These are some of the darkest days of human history. We are, we're not on the edge of a global war, but we're a lot closer now than we were a week and a half ago. And I repeat what I've said before, let's get through to the end of January and the hardest time of 2020 is over. Although later in the year, there's going to be some pretty big developments, particularly around September and October while Mars is retrograde in Aries. And as Britain knows very well, under the reign of Margaret Thatcher, there is nothing like a war to get re-elected. Catch you later, world. Bye.